be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Then blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known and from you become secrets for you. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord help us. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Keep, O Lord, your household and church in your steadfast faith and love, that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion. For the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us and that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. A reading from Psalm 100. This is on page 729 of the prayer book, and I hope others will join in. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to, to you, Lord Christ. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out 
and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, his brother, Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother, John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon, the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. Then Jesus sent, out with, sent them out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. Be received without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey or two tunics or sandals or a staff for laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who in it is worthy and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly, I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on that day of judgment than for that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues. You will be dragged before governors and kings because of me as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say. For what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father speaking to you. Brother will betray brother to death. And a father, his child, and children will rise against his parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, you will be to the next. For truly, I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the word of God be spoken, may the word of God be heard in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, uh, the, this Sunday we're doing something a little new with Zoom and Facebook, so I'll look forward to hearing from you. Please tell us how it's gone. If it's working, it does allow us to have others uh, sign in to read the lesson, so it's nice to see uh, Suzanne reading our lessons today. Thank you, Suzanne. Uh, today's gospel is our Jesus instructions to his disciples uh, about going out. And he has pretty high hopes for his disciples. He tells them to go out, um, cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, and cast out the demons. And to, to do this, um, they are supposed to uh, not prepare, not take anything extra with them. Um, not an extra bag, not an extra tunic, no extra money. They're supposed to go out and uh, don't prepare what to say, even though you'll be dragged before the authorities. And it's going to go bad. Everyone's going to hate you, and the kingdom of God will come near. How's that for instructions on the Christian life? Um, that's how it went for the disciples. It's exactly how it went. They traveled. Uh, they proclaimed the good news, they were dragged before authorities, people hated them, and the gospel spread through the entire known world. Um, uh, it's almost five years ago now that Jen and I went on our sabbatical journey by bicycle in South America and Southern Mexico. And uh, I did not follow Jesus' instructions for this tour. I was, uh, thought I was on a bicycle tour, not a gospel journey. Um, so for this bicycle tour, we flew into Bolivia and I had backups of everything I thought uh, for our tour. I had extra spokes, extra cables, extra uh, 
seat tubes, tires, inner tubes, shift, shifters, brakes. I was ready, I thought, for anything. But I didn't even get started to see how unprepared I was. Uh, when the bikes arrived, somehow one of the airlines had broken my bottom bracket. The bottom bracket is where the pedals go through the frame at the very bottom of the bike. Um, absolutely essential. And that mine were wobbling as I pedaled. That was about the only extra piece I didn't have with me on that tour. And so what am I going to do? I was a little panicked. Uh, so I Googled bicycle shops in Sucre, Bolivia, and it ends up that Google knows almost nothing about Sucre, Bolivia, almost nothing about Bolivia at all. So I mentioned it to our German hotel owner, and he knew a guy who knew a guy who knew a guy. And so one morning early, I set out pedaling to the hilly streets of Sucre, Bolivia at about 9,000 feet and found my way to Richard. Richard Strada Bicicleta Terra, his bicycle shop. And there he was. Not only was he a bicycle mechanic, he was the master, he was the master's mountain bike champion. And my Spanish at that point was still really poor on those two. We were just getting started. My Spanish was academic, not practical. I didn't know bike, the names of bicycle parts, but we both spoke bicycle. And we started talking. He showed me pictures of his races. I told him what we were planning to do. I told him, showed them the problem I had, that my bracket was wobbly. And he got busy fixing my bike. He uh, was cannibalizing parts from various brackets, from various bikes all around his shop. And I was a little nervous because it wasn't coming out of a nice, nice neat uh, Shimano box with everything in it. Um, he put it together. Um, we did some bartering for different types of equipment. He liked some of the things I had. I liked some of the things he had. And we did some bartering and agreed to a, a payment. And that bottom bracket is still the bottom bracket that's on my bike. It took me all the way through uh, South America and Southern Mexico. Uh, but it wasn't just about the bottom bracket. It was about Richard. It was about that encounter together, one cyclist to another, that I would have never had if I'd bought, brought with me the bottom bracket, if I learned how to do that complex with me. Now, I brought so many things with me on that, on that sabbatical journey. And I carried them up 10,000 foot climbs and down 10,000 foot climbs, and I didn't need them. Uh, for some reason, I thought going out into South America, I had to have everything, not even realizing that the people among whom we traveled knew how to solve their problems. They knew how to make repairs. They were resourceful and wonderful. And we learned from subsequent tours to take so much less. We didn't need all those things with us. Uh, in fact, it's better not to. We learned. something go wrong? It most certainly will. Will we get lost? Oh yeah. Will things break? Every time. But we don't have to have the answer. We have to be open to finding the answer. And often these mishaps have provided new relationships and made us open to giving and receiving together with people that we would have never known otherwise. I mean, the baggage that we carry with us, uh, the physical, this is not packing advice, Jesus is giving. It's not how to fit everything in your carry-on. It's not what you say. It's spiritual advice. We do carry baggage with us. And it is so heavy. And it weighs us down. Rejections, resentments, disappointments. Jesus says, shake them off like dust from your feet. Let them go. Let it go. I thought I was on a bicycle tour, but I ended up being on a gospel journey. It was.
was a gospel child. Learning how to let go. Have less. Encounter more. Know that I'm not all sufficient. Nobody is independent. That we need one another. And that there are people out there ready to give and to care. Just as we were ready to give. You know, in this time that we're in now, how many of you have given up uh, thinking that we know what tomorrow is going to be? We really can't. We, we do need to make plans. I don't think Jesus is saying um, be unprepared. But he is saying we can't prepare for everything. We don't know. And most of all, we are not self-sufficient and independent. That we need one another. And that if we go into the world with that sense of openness and that sense of, of receptivity, that we will not only meet new people, but we'll also experience that kingdom of God. And that kind of community certainly is one that, that will cure our lives, that will cast out the demons that oppress us, that will heal us and liberate us and lift us up. What we're going through right now is so much, the lesson is we cannot do it on our own. The mask that I wear isn't for me, it's for the people I'm with. The mask you wear isn't for you, it's for the people around you. As we care for one another, we are together, connected, and the kingdom of God is near. We are always on a lost and that as we go on this way, uh, we will encounter and meet one another. And we will meet the stranger we meet. Um, and we need to take less for us, to carry less, certainly of stuff, but even more, to carry less uh, that keeps us from that encounter with the other, our future, who has what we need, not only the bicycle part, but the grace. Because that's how God wants us. Let's continue with the creed. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We will look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, for Peter, our bishop, and for all other bishops and ministers. We serve God in his church. We pray for those on our prayer list today. 
for Mark Sandgren, Michael Werner, for Jim, Nan, Drew, Daniel, Sophie, and Bob Wagstaff. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom, especially Mildred Mario, Lori Highsmith, Ronald David Sweeting, Tom Farned, Anne Rydell, Ken Waterman, Martha Reynolds, Linda Sorensen, and Mia, for your prayers. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most, most merciful, merciful Father. In your, your compassion, compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your spirit, and that we may live and serve you in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So share what with one another a sign of peace. Peace with you. Peace. Well, as I mentioned, we are um, trying this this week to do uh, to bring the service to our congregation in two ways. One is through uh, Zoom. And the second is continuing with Facebook Live. Uh, we are recording this through Zoom and uploading this to Facebook Live simultaneously, although the Facebook uh, Live feed is about 20 seconds behind, so it's hard to have both on at the same time. The nice thing about the, um, about the Zoom link is that it allows others to come in and see one another um, and share the piece together. Uh, it allowed Suzanne to be our reader this morning, which is really nice to see someone else here uh, helping uh, lead our service. Uh, but please let us know how this is going. Uh, the other thing that doing a Zoom uh, service allows people to do is people who don't have internet access can call in and listen on their phone. So we're hoping that this is a way for more people to be able to have our services brought to them uh, digitally. Uh, even as we plan to uh, how we're going to reopen in, in the coming weeks. It's, um, we're not gonna stop doing this digital service. We have people joining us from all over the country. And I'm sure we'll have people not yet ready to go out and, and in public and gather it in for a church service. So we're gonna keep bringing this to you and we're working on it. I'd like to thank uh, Dean and Tim for working so hard on this along with all the other things uh, that they do uh, to bring this to us today. Um, we continue with morning and evening prayer. Tim is continuing uh, his service from the organ, and uh, I think you're taking requests for hymns. Isn't that right? That's correct. All right. So if you'd like to, to Tim at St. Paul's Key West. Right. You can send your uh, hymn request to Tim at St. Paul's Key West org, and he'll uh, play your hymn for you. I'm tempted to choose uh, to, to be a little mischievous and make the request right now, but I'll, I'll work through. <laughs> uh, it's nice that uh, Clover has joined us again for the service. I will point the camera to Clover, who is sitting comfortably on the uh, sitting comfortably on the bench. Clover joined us for the absolution of sins. He's a mischievous cat, probably uh, needs the grace. Um, so it's always nice to have Clover with us. Uh, but we will continue with our service with this offertory. Let us. Uh, walk in love as Christ loved us. He gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice. Oh. 
out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ is the bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this all of me. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for him for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink, do this for the remembrance of Therefore, according to his command to Apollo, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming to glory. We offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. To you, O Lord of all, presenting you from your creation his bread and his wine. We pray, you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ. His blood in the covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be an acceptable group, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly heaven, where with the ever blessed Virgin Mary, St. Paul, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage. Your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah. For the gifts of God are for the people. We take them, we share them, uh, we experience them together in remembrance that Christ died for us. And so we keep on him in our hearts our faith in us. Let us now pray with those who cannot receive uh, this sacrament in this moment. In union, O Lord Jesus Christ, with the faithful and every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are being offered. I have joined in offering the sacrifice of my grace and thanksgiving to you. I present to you myself, my soul, and my body, with the earnest longing that I may never be united to you. And since I cannot now receive you in this holy sacrament, come spiritually, I pray you, into my heart. I unite myself to you, and now I meet with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my soul. But let nothing ever separate me from you, that we live and die in your love. Amen.
365 by its great giver. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as the members of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and you have fed the spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. And of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you all. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.